So we went through the steps to solve the problems related to cables. So basically, in all the problems related to cables, we'll be finding the tension through or through the cable segments, through all the cable segments. So we went through all the steps. We went through all the steps, and problems are relatively easy when you compare it with the previous set of numericals. So let us start solving the problems now. Let me solve the first problem, which has been given in your notes. So let me just read out the problem: system of connected flexible cable. Is supporting 200 newtons and 250 newtons. These were the suspended loads at the points B and D as shown in the figure. So determine the force in every segment of the cables. You are supposed to find the force which runs through all the segments, every segment of the cable. I'll just draw the question now. So the question is. No segment. And you have another segment here. You have And you have two suspended loads here. Suspended loads of 200 Newton magnitude and another suspended load of 250. Yeah, yes, it's 250. So this is A, this is B, this is C, this is D, and this is E. Now, so this particular angle is given as 45 degree. This angle is given as 60 degree. And let me draw the dotted line in this angle is given as 30. So this is all about the question. This is the given question. So before we start the problem, let us first identify the supports. A, C, E are the supports. So we are not at all interested in supports. So step number one is to identify the junction points. As it was. Step number one is to identify the junction points. So which are the junction points here? B is one of the junction points and D is the other junction. There are two junction points. Two junction points. And how many segments? A, B, one, B, C, two, B, D, three, D, E, four. We have four cable segments. We have four cable segments and two junction points. So step number one is done. Step number one is to Identify the junction points and the points and in the step number two, in step number two, we'll be drawing the coordinates with respect to the junction points. So let this be y axis and the x axis. As far as junction B is concerned, then this will be y axis and the x axis as far as junction B is concerned. So before we go ahead with the problem, go ahead with the problem. So if this angle is 30, then this will be equal to 30. This angle is 60, but this will be equal to 60. Are the main angles now? So, we have completed step number two. We have drawn the coordinates. So in step number three, you will be marking the forces. How to mark the forces? It's very simple again. All the forces along all the cable segments will be scattering or will be moving away from the junction point. So, let us consider each junction point. We just have two junction points here. So, this is junction point B. Force will move away from the junction point. This will be T. B, A. Force will move away from the junction point. This will be T, B, C. Force will move away from the junction point. This will be T, B, D. So we have completed marking of all the forces through all the junction. This is not a cable segment. This is a suspended load. Now let us consider D. Force will move away from the junction point. This will be T, D, B. Force will move away from the junction point. This will be T, B, E. This is not a cable segment, this is a suspended load. You have suspended load which always moves vertically downwards. Suspended load. That. So you have marked all the forces now. So once you mark all the forces, you'll be drawing the free body diagram or you'll be reproducing only the coordinates and forces what you have marked here. You'll be reproducing only the coordinates and the forces that you have marked here, which will be the free body diagram later. So let me draw the free body diagram here. So let this be the coordinate system of the upper, not the upper one, uh, with respect to center B, let this be the 
or the center of the junction point to be. And let me draw one more coordinates too, which is uh, concerned with junction D. First of all, let me join B and D. Join B and D. Let us start marking all the forces. Let us start marking all the forces associated with both the junction points. Let us consider B now. Mark the suspended load, which is given as 200 pounds. Given as 200 pounds. Again, mark the suspended load with respect to, well, let us finish off everything with respect to B. So you have T, B, A, which is horizontal. You have T, B, C. This is T, B, C, which makes an angle of 45 degrees. And you have T, B, D. You have T, B, T, and this angle is given as 60. So we have marked all the forces associated with junction point B. Now let us select junction point D. Now you have a suspended load of 250 Newton magnitude. 250 Newton magnitude. And you have T, D, B, T, D, B, and this angle, this is 60, even this will be 60. And you have T, D, E, T, D, D. So this is the free body diagram. This is the free body diagram. Step number four, where you draw the free body diagram. Now let me draw this free body diagram properly once again. So once you draw the free body diagram, you're just selecting that particular junction or that particular free body diagram. You have two free body diagrams here. The first free body diagram is concerned with junction B, and the second free body diagram is concerned with junction. D. So this is the free body diagram of junction D. Let me draw it properly. This is the free body diagram of junction D. D and D. Suspended load 200 newtons. Suspended load of 250 newton magnitude. And, and we have TBA here. It is horizontal. We have TBC, which makes an angle of 45 degrees. And let me join these two. We have TB. B and T, B, B. This is 60, even this will be equal to 60. And you have T, finally you have T, D, E. T, D, E, this is. You have two free body diagrams. Let me have this. You have two free body diagrams. So which free body diagram will you consider? First is the question. So you have to consider that particular free body diagram with least number of unknowns. Let us see the free body diagram associated with junction B. Let us count the number of unknowns. One, two, three. It has three unknowns. Let us consider the free body diagram with respect to junction D. One, two, two unknowns. So which free body diagram is to be selected first? That particular free body diagram with least number of unknowns. So here, this free body diagram associated with junction D has least number of unknowns, has least number of unknowns. So let me consider the free body diagram with the junction B, associated with junction B, and let me draw it quickly. This is 250 newtons, P, B, E, and T, e, B, B. This is 60, and this is that. So we have drawn the free body diagram associated with junction B. Just observe the free body diagram. If you have three forces, totally, not the unknowns, totally if you have three forces, then you'll be applying Lamy's theorem. If you have more than three forces, totally you cannot apply Lamy's theorem. You have to go with the conditions of equilibrium. Conditions of equilibrium. Now just observe here. Here we have one, two, and three forces. Totally we have three forces in this particular free body diagram. So easily we can apply Lamy's theorem. Easily we can apply Lamy's theorem. Let us apply Lamy's theorem. According to Lamy's theorem, a particular force T D B divided by sine of angle between the other two forces T D E and 250. This will be 90 and this will be 60. Total angle will be 150. This is the angle between 250 and T D. Angle between the other two forces sine 150 it will be. Now again T D E T D E by sine T D E by sine of angle between the other two forces. This will be 30 and this will be 90, so total angle will be 120 sine 120 is equal to 250 by 
250 by sine of angle between the other two forces TDB and TDE, which is sine 90. Again, these two terms are the terms with the unknowns, TDB and TDE, and this is the term with the a known force, a known. So equate these two with the known. So let this be equation number one and let this be equation number two. So again, if you solve equation number one, equation number one, which is T D E by sine 120 is equal to 250 by sine 90. So here T D E is the only one will get the value of T D E. We'll get the value of T D E. Calculate T D E will be 250 into sine 120 divided by sine 120 divided by sine 90. So which is which will be the value of T D E. Similarly, if you solve the second equation, second equation is T D D divided by sine 150 is equal to 250 by sine 90. So again, T D B is the only unknown here. 250 into sine 150 divided by sine 90 will give you the value of T D B as well. T D B as well. So you We'll get the value of TDB and TDE here just by applying Lamis here, just by applying Lamis here. So you, you are done with you are done with one of the one of the free body diagrams. You have considered free body diagram with junction D and you have come take ABD as well. Now, now let us consider the free body diagram as for cylinders of cylinders. Let us consider junction B now. Mark all the force. This is 200 newtons. And this force will be T B D, which is equal to T D B, which is equal to T D B. T D B. And it will be equal to 125 newtons. It will be equal to 125 newtons. We'll be finding this. We have already found this in the previous step. So this angle will be 60 degree. And this is T B. A and this will be T B C making an angle of 45. Check the number of forces, not the unknowns, the total number of forces. One, two, three, and four. So you have totally four forces. Since you have totally four forces, you cannot apply Lamis theorem. So we have, since you cannot apply Lamis theorem, you have to go with the conditions of equilibrium, the conditions of equilibrium. So in order to apply the two conditions of equilibrium, summation of Fx equal to zero and summation of Fy equal to zero, you have to resolve all the inclined forces into their horizontal and vertical components. So you have two inclined forces. The horizontal component of this is TBC sine 45, vertical component is TBC cos 45. Horizontal component of this is 125 sine 60, vertical component of this is 125 cos 60 since it moves downwards, it is negative. Now let us apply the conditions of equilibrium. The first condition of equilibrium is the summation of Fx equal to 0. Mark all the forces which moves in x direction. You have minus TBA minus TBA plus TBC sine 45 plus 125 sine 60 is equal to 0. You cannot solve this. Take this as equation number one because it has two unknowns. Apply the second condition of equilibrium. Apply the second condition of equilibrium. Let me run this. Apply the second condition of equilibrium, which is summation of your phi equal to zero. Summation of your phi equal to zero. Mark all the forces which moves in y direction minus 200, minus 125, cos 60. Then plus T B C cos 45 equal to 0. Therefore, you get the value of T B C. If you solve this illustrator, you get the value of T B C as 371.2. 371.2. So once you get the value of T B C, substitute the value of T B C in the equation 1 in this equation. In the equation 1, to get the value of T B A. You get the value of T B A. If you substitute the value of T B C as 371 in equation 1, you'll get the value of T B as again 370.4. So by this we find we got all the tensions. We got T B C, we got T B A, we got T B D or T D B, and finally T D E in the previous step.
So we found the tension through a tension which tension which runs through all the cable segments here, all the cable segments. So these are the steps to be followed. These are the steps to be followed. Hope this particular concept is clear. Let me go through one more problem in the next video. Thank you.